Hi guys, White Witch 110 here. Hope everyone is well. I've been sitting out here on the balcony enjoying the evening. Nice breeze coming in. I'm looking over the neighborhood and seeing that some of the leaves are beginning to turn. Fall is fast approaching. I'm going to be reading a story for you this evening. It is one that I had started a while back, but I had never finished because I didn't have an ending for it. But I do now, so I will be here. George Jr. is here. The day was gray and the streets were empty. Clara walked cautiously on the sidewalk's edge. She listened to the sound of the wind through the iron fences. Flattened paper cups took flight from the curb. She felt quite alone. Clara envisioned spring the year before. People sitting on barside patios, the sound of plates and cutlery, glasses clanking empty, on a server's tray. The noise of conversations about nothing or something. It had all been stifled. Not even the sound of traffic reached her ears. The only sound was the wind. The lonely wind. <coughs> her long black hair covered her face to the whim of the breeze. Its destination unknown. Standing under the bridge, there was no sound of tires on the asphalt above. Clara truly felt alone. From behind windows in the apartments ahead, faces peered out, hands waved. Clara walked on, accompanied by her thoughts. The tigers had been taking advantage of the deserted neighborhoods. Clara began to concentrate on her own footsteps. She began to count each time her heel made contact with the pavement. In her own little world, she did not hear it at first. The echo of footsteps behind her. Stopping for traffic light, she finally made note of the noise. Clara was uneasy, so she didn't turn around. Her keys were at the ready between her fingers, ready to attack. She was only a couple of blocks from home. Clara kept her pace, not hinting to the panic inside. She, her steps, these steps continued to echo behind her. Although difficult, she stayed at her pace. Three more squares and she would be home. Her foot fell strongly on the wooden steps. One, two, three, four. Behind her, the echo followed. She was ready. Quickly, Clara turned, keys at eye level. No one was there, except for the wind. Slowly, she lowered her hand. Her eyes searched. Her left hand reached out. Clara barely felt the energy, though she sensed the presence. Into visibly empty space, she advised not to follow her inside. You are not welcome. Standing in the hallway, leaning against the door, Clara finally exhaled. Her partner, Jerry, emerged from the living room to greet her. Lovingly, he wrapped his arms around her, offering a tender kiss. Clara smiled and accompanied him back into the room. Jerry inquired as to her behavior on the veranda. She began to explain her brief experience. Concerned, Jerry reached for the blessed rose water, rose water. 
One by one, he traced an equal armed cross at each door and window. Never can be too safe, he calmly explained. As the evening progressed, threads of scalding electricity ignited the sky. The sharp crack and succeeding rumble vibrated through the foundation. Something more congregated overhead. Together, they digest the, the sensation. The ferocity of the storm accumulated in the blackness. Bright street lights now simulate the flicker of candles flame. The atmosphere had rapidly mutated. The witches meditate a wall of protection encompassing the neighborhood. Young punks continue their desecration of several vacant spaces. Their joyful laughter was abruptly stopped. An expression of trepidation now mark their faces. Their gaze transfixed on the root of the succeeding blaze of lightning. Searing heat radiated from above their heads, assuring them, or causing them to freeze. They heard it connect onto the aerial on top of building only a few feet away. Like cockroaches in a bright kitchen, they scattered, running home to their mothers. In the living room, Jerry sensed a massive energy disturbing the forest floor five miles away. This was substantial. He observed through remote viewing leaves wafting in the air, dry earth under the canopy is disturbed. The source is invisible. Can you see it? Clara asks. No. Jerry answers, his voice full of failure. It's begun. Their eyes locked. It will be here in no time at all. No one is ready, Clara said. Doesn't matter, does it? I suppose we are the lucky ones, he commented. She reluctantly nodded her head. Clara felt vulnerable. For the first time in years, what defense did they have? Within the forest, on a large boulder, it sat. There was no need to hurry. It could feel their sweet panic, which it delighted in. Saliva flowed along its jagged teeth, similar to a waterfall. A clear liquid cascaded down its broad chest. On the ground, a puddle began to grow. Weeds instantly died. The creature smiled. His kin would soon arrive. Together, they would subdue this race, languishing in their confusion. Jerry paced the living room, desperate to connect with the soul. The blockade was dense with no way round. The creature smirked, then screamed ravishing. Jerry's attempts were little irksome mosquitoes to this appalling brute. Keep trying, my son. The profound, cryptid voice resonated beyond the extents of woodland. People in the city shuddered to the unearthly sound. Adults ran to the window, placing their faces on the glass, craning to see arms stretched out behind. Stay away from the window, get back on the sofa, parents sternly told their children. Clara bounded down the stairs, 
hopeful Jerry had finally gotten through. Any luck? She stood in the doorway. No, he shook his head. Every attempt, it blocks me. I have no idea what we'll be dealing with. Jerry silently faulted himself. I see that look on your face, Clara stood before him. We weren't to know. A tap on the window breaks their moment. A stone? Clara wondered, her body leaning on the sofa. She peers outside. She peered outside. Jerry joined her. It's not the soul from the forest, he informed her. Guarded, Clara's palm was placed flat against the sheet of glass. Jerry waits. Moments transfer to min minutes. Open the door and bid Josh to enter. Soliciting no reason, he did as requested. Joshua, please enter as requested by Clara. A cool, a cool breeze flitted his bangs. Clara witnessed a shape solidify. An indentation in the sofa reinforced Joshua's assurance. She was precisely the person he intended to locate. Is this why you pursued me yesterday? Clara queried. Josh nodded his head. Carefully, the energy built, slowly controlled by Joshua. He's going to attempt to speak, she informed Jerry. In complete silence, the spirit gathered power from within the house. Seal the door. The syllables were noted. Taking up the rose water, Jerry proceeded an equal arm cross and salt. <coughs> an extensive exhale was expelled from Clara's side. Joshua was now a full body apparition. I've seen your face before, Clara stated, in the market before this happened in the park beside the dog, on the bus last week. Yes. Why didn't you speak to me? I had to be sure, sure you were the one. There is no doubt now that you are. Puzzled, Clara inquired as to the right one for what? You, he paused a moment, and you, pointing to Jerry. With us, we will create the answer. Answer to what? Jerry moved forward. Joshua grimaced under Jerry's energy. Soon is all he said before disappearing. Dumbfounded, the two sit alone in the silent house. In the forest, mature trees swayed the ground was disturbed. Guttural laughter resonated far and wide. A couple were woken from a sound sleep. As the outburst continued, neighboring families were jerked from their slumber. A chain reaction of lights cast menacing shadows on the sidewalks and lawns. Children holed up in their, in their beds under cover fearful of what approached. Husbands and wives stood in unison, alarmed. What could this noise be? This is a nightmare generated into reality. Phenomenons, phenomenons of this matter should never befall a city like theirs. The reunion had commenced. The hysteria heightened. The earthquakes beneath the joyful celebration. My dear sister, where have you been? I haven't been to London to visit the Queen. I have laid dormant in the glens of Scotland. The female creature responded. 
our dear uncle brought word to me through a storm cloud. So I am here. She closed her eyes and bowed in jest. The family is gathering in the sky above, the creature stated, its arms outstretched to the sky. From above, invisible beings made their landing. A haze lifted as they achieved touchdown. Grunts of welcome rang through the air. Salutations, kinfolk. The night ripens before us. Feast alongside one another. The bounty is here. His arms extended out either side. The unseen banquet ingested. Slumber supersedes the celebration. While the cryptids rest, Jerry embraced the sense of ease to attempt a connection once more. The moment his thoughts reached out, the creature launched, launched his fist into the air. You will never know until the moment. It sent on the wind to Jerry's ears. Clara foresaw the altercation and a snippet of what was to come. Jerry grabbed hold of Clara's arm he understood the expression on her face. What did you see? It wasn't clear, but I know there is more of them, she told him. How many more? Clara turned to face him. She took a deep breath. At least 20. 20? My God, how are we going to handle this? Jerry wanted to know. Joshua, he'll help us. How? I'm not sure, but he said he would do it. We would do it together. But Clara had not felt Josh around her lately. Desperately, she said. Sorry, hang on. Okay. Desperately, she sent out to his energy alone to come to them. A clap of thunder on a clear night startled them both. Once again, the neighborhood awoke. Parents checked on their children. Once again, their fears of the unknown lurking on the other side of the glass. While in the garden, Joshua made himself known to Clara. He explained he had been observing, been observing the leader from a distance. There were indeed 20 in total. They had gathered by the old grist mill on the other side of the forest. He informed her there did not seem to be any hurry. The creatures were very lethargic. Have you heard their plans? Joshua told her. Unfortunately, no. The cryptids slept soundly all day in diffused sunlight. Happy memories of the past century were dreamed of. Clara made note she hadn't heard crickets in a week. Stopping to think about it, neither have I, Jerry agreed. It is dusk when the creatures wake. They feasted upon replenished supplies, invisible to our eyes. Eat, eat my family. The time creeps closer. I felt someone near last night, but when I woke, no one was there, his sister told him. I felt nothing. I would have woken if someone were here. I think you were dreaming, he scolds. The female creature did not press the facts. She knew for certain there was a visitor in the early morning. Her brother always had intimidated her. This night, she branched off, made her way to the river. Alone, except for the wind, she began to speak. Carry this news to my uncle. My brother will not listen. We had a spy among us. Hearing the crack of a branch, the creature became silent. Telepathically, 
she called out. Without thought, Joshua answered. Show yourself to me, or I will call my brother. Not wanting the tyrant to join, he cautiously materialized. Her eyes opened wide, and her heart was soon taken. Her large eyes flirted with him. She motioned him to follow. Quietly they weaved their way along an overgrown path. At the end of this path was a mid-sized cottage, though it was the view before them that took his breath away, a deep pool of ice-blue water. Joshua could not see to the bottom, its depth so vast it turned black. Full-grown trees had fallen in, even at their height they did not break the surface. What is this place? He inquired with a smile. A safe place, she replied, turning from the secluded secluded grandeur. Before him he spoke. What do you mean by safe? And how can you be trusted? If I had wanted you dead, although technically you are, I could have done it already. My brother has waited for you. I know. It has been a century at least. Yes, it has. I never expected to find you here. Her voice, so humane. It is my duty to seek closure. You've understood this. Softly, she agrees. It had been a handful of days since Clara had contact with Joshua. He isn't answering. Try as she might, there was no connection between them. She is attempting contact, Joshua informs informs the cryptid. Answer her. No, now is not the time. A transformation commences. And I think we'll leave it there for this evening. We're at 22 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed it to this far. I will continue it tomorrow. So I hope everybody has had a good Tuesday. And tomorrow is Wednesday, hump day. Just one more day closer to the long weekend, Labor Day weekend. I do admit, I do really miss the Jerry Lewis telethon. We haven't had it broadcast up here in quite a while. That was always something to look forward to, something to donate to. And for some reason, I always made something in plastic canvas on those weekends. Don't know why, but I just did. I remember one year going to our Canadian National Exhibition when the telephone was on. It was such a hard decision to make because I wanted to be at home to see what the grand total was for the evening or for the weekend. But that's in the past and it's a good memory so everyone thank you to my family YouTube family for coming by this evening I appreciate it as always love you guys anyone new who happens to be passing through welcome and please do check out my other videos if there is anything there that interests you please consider giving it a thumbs up you can leave me a comment, I'll get back to you. And it is always appreciated if you can share them out. While you're here, also consider subscribing. And if you do, go that step further and click on the notification bell so that you'll know each time that I upload. And as always, until the next time, ciao for now.